beautiful, beautiful day. But you, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, take time to stop. Just not all that glad when they said, come, let's go to the house of the Lord. Can anybody say they're glad they've been in the house of the Lord this morning? Show me 
your glory. And then it says that the Lord passed by. Moses hid in the cleft of the rocks. And the Scripture tells us that the Lord passed by Moses. And I think about this this morning on the fact that, you know what? I've known God. I know Him. In fact, to be honest with you, I know Him pretty well. We've hung out for the last 20 years. Not always good times, but we've hung out for the last 20 years. Sometimes He didn't like what I was doing, and there's been many a time I didn't like what He was doing. But the truth is, there He is. Moses has been with Him in the wilderness for all these years. And now I find these words from Moses' lips. God, show me your glory. And I have to wonder, where was Moses when God was showing him the glory? But then I stop and think about it like this. Maybe Moses hasn't seen the glory yet. Maybe he's seen the miracles. Maybe he's seen the signs. Maybe he's seen the wonders that we know he has. But maybe he hasn't seen the glory of God show up in manifest presence like it's about to do for Moses in this story. My Bible tells me that when God passed by Moses, Moses had his back to him. God passed by him. And the Bible says when he came down off of Mount Sinai that he glowed so much that he had to wear a veil to cover the glory of God that was on his face. So, this morning, I want to share with you for a few more minutes. Moses had asked for something he'd never asked for before. Show me your glory. He didn't ask for water. He didn't ask for manna. He said, show me your glory. You see, there's one thing that Moses understood at the fear of being alone. That it wasn't what God could do for him, but that it was God was with him. Show me your glory. And the Bible tells us that Moses glowed when he came down off the rock that he glowed. But let me share a couple of things with you real quick. Moses wasn't with the children of Israel when this took place. He was up on Mount Sinai on the day of Pentecost. Moses did something different. And he got something different. Moses stopped asking for water and started saying, show me your glory. Moses did something different. Now, i got to be honest with you. At the end of the argument, Moses is telling God, we will not go if you don't go with us. We will not go if you don't go with us. And God says to Moses, I will go with you. How many know this morning that in the middle of all the mess you created, in the middle of all the mess that Satan has brought against you, God has never left you or forsaken you. He is always with you. He drove my drunk car home many a night. Many a night he drove my old drunk car back to the house. I wasn't drunk the car was. But he drove it home. Actually, it was a pickup truck, but nevertheless. Moses said, show me your glory. And then it says that the Lord passed by. Moses hid in the cleft of the rocks. And the Scripture tells us that the Lord passed by Moses. And I think about this this morning on the fact that, you know what? I know God. I know Him. In fact, to be honest with you, I know Him pretty well. We've hung out for the last 20 years. Not always good times, but we've hung out for the last 20 years. Sometimes he didn't like what I was doing, and there's been many a time I didn't like what he was doing. But the truth is, there he is. Moses has been with him in the wilderness for all these years. And now I find these words from Moses' lips. God, show me your glory. And I have to wonder... Where was Moses when God was showing him the glory? But then I stop and think about it like this. Maybe Moses hasn't seen the glory yet. 
Maybe He's seen the miracles. Maybe He's seen the signs. Maybe He's seen the wonders that we know He has. But maybe He hasn't seen the glory of God show up in manifest presence like it's about to do for Moses in this story. My Bible tells me that when God passed by Moses, Moses had his back to him. God passed by him. And the Bible says when He came down off of Mount Sinai that He glowed so much they had to wear a veil to cover the glory of God that was on His face. So, this morning, I want to share with you for a few more minutes. Moses had asked for something he had never asked for before. Show me your glory. He didn't ask for water. He didn't ask for manna. He said, show me your glory. You see, there's one thing that Moses understood at the fear of being alone. That it wasn't what God could do for him, but that it was God was with him. Show me your glory. And the Bible tells us that Moses glowed when he came down off the rock that he glowed. But let me share a couple of things with you real quick. Moses wasn't with the children of Israel when this took place. He was up on Mount Sinai on the day of Pentecost. Moses did something different. And he got something different. Moses stopped asking for water and started saying, show me your glory. Moses did something different. Now, i got to be honest with you this morning. If I've ever been in a church that does church right, now we're going to camp meeting tonight, and camp meeting will be done right. 3.30, we're pulling out of here. 3 o'clock for your husband. We're pulling out of here today. We're literally pulling out. We're heading to Roseburg. First night of camp meeting, if you want to go be here, we'll pile in cars, we'll pile on roofs, whatever it takes. We're going to have a good time. But i got to be honest with you. If I've ever seen a church that knows how to do church, it's Harvest Christian Center, Sweet Home, Oregon. But if we continue to do church the way we do church, we'll continue to have the same things we've always had. We've had some good stuff, haven't we? I want more. I want more. I want the power of God to walk in, show up, wade through, and the guy that's walking with a limp stops limping. If we are going to see different results, we have to have different actions. So much different than first service, but that's all right. Maybe like Moses, we know God. We know how to worship. We know how to lift our hands. We know how to lay at the floor. We know how to do it all, right? I can twirl. It's one of the Old Testament words for praise, right? Maybe I need to do something different. Maybe I'm too good at doing God, and I need to do something different. When is the last time you jumped out of your comfort zone and praised God a little bit differently? When's the last time you put down your cell phone and started listening to the preacher? When is the last time you did something different and expected God to show up with His glory and do something different? If God showed up on Mount Sinai to the point to where Moses had to wear a veil because of the glow, maybe because Moses did something different, God showed up a little differently. Maybe because we do church so good, He shows up the same every single week and He touches some people. But maybe if we're going to have God give a glow a light that chases the darkness and drives the enemy away, maybe we need to do something different. I'm asking you something today. I 
ask you when you got here, do you need something from God? I ask you if you needed something from God and almost every hand in the house went up. Almost every hand. If we need something from God, why would we worship exactly the same as we always do? Why would our prayers be the same as they always are? I get up every morning, I pray for eight minutes, I do my Bible study, it's on my phone, I can have that done in about four minutes, and I move on through my day, and I'm expecting God to pour out on me. (laughs) Maybe I need to get out of the valley and get on top of Mount Sinai and spend a little more time with God. Can you imagine what would happen here Today, today, if you, if every person in this room did something different, if you worship different than you've ever worshipped when we get ready to have an altar call, if you didn't care, if you slapped somebody or not, I watched a woman hugging back one time, I said, God, that's embarrassing. You know what he said to me? He said, she worships more in her finger than you do in your whole body. And I had to lay in the floor and repent before God because she was doing one of these. And I thought, that is so silly. God said, she worships me with every ounce of who she is. (laughs) When are you going to want it out of us? To do something different. When are you going to want it bad enough to do something different? I've been watching people do something different since first service. And you know what? I believe God's doing something different in their life. But if I worship the same, I should expect the same. That's the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. What would happen if I broke out of my mold and did something different for Jesus. <coughs> Worship, prayer, shout. I heard a young man shout up here this morning. He kind of broke out of his mold a little bit. You know why? Because he desperately wants something from God. And it's almost like, it's almost like, God, you owe us something because I showed up this morning I did my three songs and a prayer. I'm listening to that preacher fuss at me. Now you owe me something, God. What would happen? What would happen if we said, God, just show me your glory. Just show me your glory. Just show me your glory. I'll dance like David danced. Well, I'm not a dancer. Well, maybe you should be. Maybe you ought to be one of those tongue talkers. Maybe you ought to be one of those that shouts the victory. Maybe your quiet little pattern of a foot ought to be one of those hop skips and a jump that change up on the pews. Maybe it ought to be the people that get up on the seat and say, you know what? I will not be denied. I will not be denied. God, show me your glory! I will kick you though, but I don't want to step on the top. The joy of the Lord is my strength. See, I know there's people here today that need strength. You need joy. You need victory. You need healing. And you do church good. You do church real good. And nothing ever changes in your situation. Maybe it's time we mess up the way we do church. Maybe it's a time we just start changing and let God start pouring out the Holy Ghost like they were in the days of old. Remember the story? Remember the verse? The joy of the Lord is my strength? Well, if I get joy, the Lord will give me strength. What are you talking about? That's not what it said. It's in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah that that's written one of those books in there. And here's what it said. They repented before God. They went home because things were falling apart in their life. They sat in sackcloth and ashes. They honored God in what they did. And it gave God joy. And He gave them strength to rebuild Jerusalem. Get 
beauty and your virtues. You know what he said? Why don't you do something different? Why don't this morning, if you need something from God, why don't you do something different? Well, I might embarrass myself. Good. <laughs> Maybe you ought to be embarrassed a little bit. And the one that's looking at you, Maybe they ought to get on their knees and do something different too. Because here's what I know. I knew this before she said it, but Miss Irma came to me and confirmed that the Holy Ghost was the portion about today. Hey, Jesus is pouring out in your life. And honestly, it's almost overwhelming what all He's doing in your life. It's almost overwhelming. But you hang on, brother, because God's doing big, big things. I'd almost like to be in your shoes than mine. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no, I don't want to start over. Uh, stop for just a minute and think about this. What do you need from God today? What have you been praying for for a long, long time? What do you need God to do? Heal your body? Well, I just learned to live with it. Why? With the king's kid. You have access to the throne of God. Why would you just learn to live with it? You have dominion over it all. Why would you just learn to accept? Is it because we don't want to get out of our comfort zones and do something a little different? I'll close with this and then we're going to have an altar call. We're going to have anybody that wants to get crazy for Jesus, whether that shout, cry, we play in the floor, I don't care what you do. I just want you to do something different today. I preached in a Nazarene church. I had a beard down to here. My head was shaved slick. Earrings hanging out of both ears. Dressed in leather head to toe. <laughs> preached to about 300 people in a Nazarene church. I preached about uh, Moses in the boat. Some guy came up to me and said, Moses wasn't in the boat, son. It was Noah. I said, you're right. I'm sorry. But when I gave the altar call that night, hear me. When I gave the altar call that night, nobody moved. Nobody. And I walked to walk off the platform and I stopped and I walked back up and I said, God told me to tell you that there's someone here with anger. And if you let go of that anger right now, he'll heal you. As I started off the stage from the back of the church, a little lady in a walker, about 80 years old, comes up the aisle gritting her teeth, Jim, gritting her teeth. And she said, I know you're talking to me! I never met the lady before, right? This is where it gets real weird, right? Let's just say it like this. She ended up with a bottle of water on her head. And the church broke out in revival like you've never seen before. <coughs> she did something different. And God did something different. So I guess the only question is, how much more do you need from God? Do you need the same that you're getting or do you need some more? Because today, I believe with everything in me, the Holy Spirit is here. If you didn't feel that, you've got a problem. You need to get saved. That's the first thing. Get saved. Then we'll worry about the rest. But don't leave here today doing the same thing and expecting something different. Do something different today. And expect God to start moving in a different way. If you always dance, don't dance. Do something else. Run. If you always run, dance. If you always shout, cry. Do something different that will literally move you into the point where you are saying, God, show me your glory! I'm not moving another step till you show me your glory. God, I can't go any farther leaving this church. I never could do it in the first place and you've been with me all along. But I need more now. I need more. I need more, God. I need more. And the Bible says that when he came out the mountain, he had more. 
The Bible says when the children were in the fiery furnace and they did something different, they came out with more. And Daniel in the lion's den came out with more. And Peter, when he jumped out of the boat, never had walked on water before. But he did it that day. What do you need from God today? Stay with me if you will. Father, I come to you right now in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the sweet Holy Ghost of God. God, we're going to...